So shields, regen, medicay, lots of health, fear, just kind of a filler for the 12 points. Uh, the whole idea being that you want to get a lot of benefit out of the corpse load's ability by both having decent hit points already, but then also having alternating attack types. So I've got mono ranged, mono melee, and then I've got a couple of bits in the middle that just have both, but they are very, very durable. So again, this is an honorable mention. This is not one that I'm actually laddering with, but I wanted to go ahead and show it just to kind of demonstrate how, how good it is now and how much I, uh, how excited I am about the change. Urgh. There we go. And so the great thing here is, and I'm going second, you just have some really, really powerful, very durable cards. So every single turn, this guy over here is going to get 25 extra health as long as I'm doing ranged defensive melee attacks back and then anytime I'm up against a shooting attack that I don't really want to take for whatever reason I can go melee instead or even ready and then top off my health beautifully so so you can see how much this guy's doing here on the side let me actually see we're gonna go ahead and ready for a bit and get a little extra health here and you can really see how much health that adds up to I don't think I needed that yet but this is gonna be a close enough game where I'm gonna to have to make sure we keep our health up at a decent level. And I'm going to lose this guy, but that'll be my first card lost yet. I'm actually going to lose all of them, but I still got four. And this is going to be interesting. And I may lose this, which is kind of great, because since I'm not laddering this one, I actually expected this game to be not very challenging. So I appreciate that it actually is a bit challenging. This thing has so many, like... To have fear and then also have the volume of hit points that it has just makes it a very, very scary piece. Yeah, so I should comfortably win this. But this is not uh, no slouch. That is a pretty good Skull Taker deck. And so I'm not at all ashamed to play against it, which is great. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Bloop. But yeah, so again, Corpse Lord is one of the starter warlords. Is a really, really... It's one I've always liked just because Corpse Lord is the cheapest of the Necron Warlords, so it's really easy to pack all of your most powerful, highest level cards in a deck there. But then also that trait is now not useless. <laughs> and it was always okay, right? So Necrons have always had that very high hit points. They have regen, they have Medicaid, they have shields. Um, all things that will help your cards stay alive. And then on top of that, to also have the Corpse Lord's ability to do so much additional healing is awesome. So it makes it a very durable, very powerful deck. Which I like to see. So, alright, that was honorable mention number one. Honorable mention number two is Zephyr Blade. I'm going to pop on right over to that. Getting a little lag here, so it's going to take a second. Any second now. And I'm not actually going to play a game with Zephyr Blade because there's nothing that's fundamentally changed about Zephyr Blade as a warlord. Uh... Got a big buff to uh, hit points, so a big buff to stats and just kind of overall defense, which is great. Like, it's really good for Zephyr Blade, but it's already one of the most powerful Warlords, so gained a bunch. Um, good for you, Zephyr Blade, but we're not going to worry about that. And now that I've clicked in here, I need to double check this. So we're going to jump straight on to Voldus. Well, we're jumping backwards. Excuse me. So I very strongly considered level, uh, laddering with my Space Marines this season because of the changes to Voldus, and I'm really excited about these. The biggest one for him was just a massive points drop, which that reminds me, I need to actually move him in my uh, Warlord Guides to put him in the right place. But yeah, so he not only got moved out of big game hunter territory, which is great, but he also got dinged down in points by so much that you can actually fit a lot of psychers in the deck typically i've always put in um one to two really really big beefy psychers and then just filled with you know whatever else i could put in there usually tech cards like my uh ooh, that's not good your taunt your medicaids and just as many of them as possible so that you could keep your heavy hitters alive Whereas now, with the cost change, it's just enough that I'm able to just jam-pack this deck with Psychers. I think I have one non-Psyker in here now, which would just have been totally unheard of in my previous builds. Um, this is going to be a really easy game because I'm dramatically over-leveled here, but watch me say that and then lose. <laughs> but no, just as you can see here, it's a full board of Psychers, which I have not done in a Voltus deck in literally years. Uh, the only non-Psyker I have in here is the 14-point Taunt, just because he's way too good to leave home without. Um, 
incredible piece. And so I've actually got, we're going to do one more of those because that was so, so fast. Just to recap it, every time you have a Psyker on the board and then you play another friendly card, um, any Psykers you have on the board get plus 25% to their base Psychic attack. Let me check my numbers after we deploy. But yeah, so look at this. So it's got all the Psykers in it. This guy got cheaper. This guy's leveled up to the point where I can kind of take him now. Too much. Too many clicks. Going slow. Um, so yeah, so between this guy's cost cut and this guy's cost cut, that's a whole other card I can squeeze in here, which just is awesome. Uh, yeah, so we're going to play another one. And I was going to check the trait there. But yeah. Voltus is... I've always enjoyed him. I really like Space Marine Psychers. Space Marines have just a tremendous variety of powerful Psychers, which combos beautifully with Voltus's, with, uh, yeah, Voltus's ability. And let me check that. It is 20%, right? Yeah, 20%. Okay. So every time I play a Psyker, my Psykers currently on the board gain an additional 20% to their Psychic stat, which comboed with Inspiring Presence gives them very significant Psychic stats very quickly. And then you combo that with things like uh, Psionic Blast, where you've got Nyal over here blasting Psychic across the board every turn. It is no joke. These Psykers all also have secondary attack types, mostly melee, but also not... Uh, non-zero ranged attacks as well, so they are attacking back off turns and just generally doing a very effective job as a deck. And that's the thing about it is it now feels like a Space Marine deck where typically it didn't. Just that is as in you have kind of your large stack of all-rounder cards that just perform well, like they're just good. Uh, and that's something that Voldus always felt behind on and now he certainly doesn't. And you can see how this is just chainsawing through stuff. Uh, Again, not laddery, not currently laddering Space Marines, so it's no surprise that I'm chainsawing through stuff, but I wanted to be sure to highlight that because I don't want to leave Voldus behind, even though I didn't opt for running him this season. All right, and now let's look. So I'm not going to play Zephyr Blade because we're getting into here, so now we will look at... I believe it's Parasite next. Definitely getting some lag here, so I'll just talk about it. So Parasite, not only did the Parasite get... No, the Parasite got a massive buff. So previously, uh, the Parasite's attack damage was reduced. Yeah, Parasite. So Parasite, Aramon, um, Custodes, we'll get there in a minute, and then Gasgol, because Gas. So we're going to go with the Parasite. And the Parasite got its trait changed. So it has the Infest trait, where the first time an enemy card is hit by a melee attack from one of your cards, it becomes Infested. And then that infested card, when it dies, does a percentage of its health to adjacent friendly minions as just blast damage, which makes it one of the only cards in the game to have a melee barrage-esque ability and is super, super strong. Um, and I love it. Also, it's quite cheap. Um, so it's one of the more flexible Tyranid Warlords because you can put it in basically anything. Ooh, we got new Aramon. We'll get to see preview that too. <laughs> But the big change that they just got is that the previously that first initial hit, that infest hit, was actually doing less damage. Ouch. <laughs> you just got nailed by all these different things. Um, previously it was doing less damage than um, your base attack, where now that got completely flipped. So previously it was 60%, so instead of hitting that guy for 98, it hit him for like 70-something. Um, splat. Now it hits for more. So it went from 60% to 110% which is so good. And of course, it's only in the first attack, but still, you're going from being a kind of a weirdly slow melee deck to being a really strong alpha striker where you hit stuff a lot harder early, which is great. And then you can snowball, of course, into actually getting kills because as you get those explosive death kills, you can see that just cascades damage across the board. And I'm just gnawing right through this. Um, I do appreciate that it's up against Aramon too because he also was impressively reworked. And I will say, shout out in this, just as a side note, shout out to Anti-Infantry as a trait. I still am kind of coming around to it, but at the end of the day, it has been extremely effective. And you'll see some Anti-Infantry in all of my decks today. Maybe not all. I think all. We'll check that. But anyway, you saw how nasty and fast the Parasite was because of that change. Um, 
it is kind of funny. That did actually... One of the most powerful pieces in a Parasite deck is Death Blow. The Death Blow trait is really effective for infesting opposing cards, which now that value has actually gone down quite a bit because you almost don't want to hit your opposing cards with Death Blow because that's a... Now you're losing the attack bonus you would have gained otherwise, whereas before I had it in there so that you could get that triggered so your hard-hitting cards would hit for their full damage instead of 60%. So now it's kind of turned on its head. Uh, but yeah, really, really good. Just to talk about the deck real quick, because this is one I'm actually quite proud of. You've got Fear and Furious Charge here to both get those extra damage out or take out injured cards to go ahead and set up a Cascade and hit things off lane. Um, this guy's a cheap filler that also has that death blow to add the infest to opposing cards, but then also just as a cheap piece to fill in there. Uh, target acquired is a really, really key piece with this, because if you go up against a deck that has a couple very heavy pieces, you get a huge value out of killing those, and also you want to take them down so they don't chew you apart. Little six-point endless filler, furious charge filler, medicay filler, and then you've got your two really punchy pieces here. Death Leaper is one of the key ones for me, especially because he's got the defensive trait of fear. Um, since he gained fear... Man, does he stick on a board. It is very difficult to kill the Death Leaper now versus what it used to be. Um, this guy here is both Death Blow and um, Berserk, which is a really great combo with a lot of hit points, high base damage, and then also a ramping damage that ramps both his damage and also his Death Blow, which really does a lot of damage when he goes, and it takes a while for him to go. So great, great piece at a very decent price point for what he brings. And then this guy is one of my favorite cards. Had a bunch of trait changes, and I will say that I do miss having Death Blow on this thing, but this is a great candidate for anti-infantry, because if you're up against infantry, which is the most common card type in the entire game, um, an additional 60, I'll be dealing 1.6 times this. Let me actually do that. So we've got... Somebody's probably already beaten me on the math. 1.6 times 121 is 193, almost 200 damage. And then... If you hit something for the initial attack, he's suddenly dealing almost 213 damage, which will take out a significant number of scary pieces, and will punch straight through taunt on the very, very common um, infantry taunt cards out there. So this is a great guy to bust down walls, to take out a durable taunt, and go ahead and kind of hit the other cards on the board. Uh, also, has just a ton of hit points and just a high base melee attack. So he's very expensive, and so he does kind of take away a lot of premium slots in the deck. But the Parasite's so cheap, these other cards are efficient enough that it really, really fits here. And I'm very happy to have a good home for the Moloch. So just talking behind that. Um, yeah, so 110% damage. I am so pumped about that buff. Jumping right along. Next up we have Chaos. And he's going to move a bit. So Chaos Servant's Orc. Cool. Going to go to Chaos. And of course for Chaos, I'm using Aramon. Because Aramon got a big buff in that his ability now is not potentially useless. <laughs> so we'll talk about the deck first this time. So Aramon's trait changed, where every single turn, every player turn, a random card will be hit. And if it's a friendly card, it'll be hit with healing. If it's an enemy card, it will hit, be hit for damage. And it now is either 5 or 30. 30! 30 healing. A 30-point swing in either direction is giant in a lot of games. And a 5 is not useless. The single thing I'm most happy about this now is that a 5 is not 0 if you're taking healing. So it was it used to be 1 to 20, which kind of sucked. Uh, before that is anywhere between 1 and 20, which was truly god-awful, because it was almost never the minimum or the maximum. This is a really good spot. It does reflect the randomness of Zinch, but also is very, very effective. The key thing for me is that 5 is now enough to take out an injured Akaran card. Um, so you can actually reasonably, on the low end, do some very significant stuff with this. So love that change. Um, and then looking at the deck, it of course centers around the Lord of Change, just being that key piece that goes in there. Um, and then I, because of Psychic Mirror matches or just times where you don't want to ready for whatever reason, um, I've leaned this heavily on melee as a secondary attack type. So I've got the most efficient melee card possibly in the game here in Gordor Bond at that 22 with Fear, 74 base melee. Real Mess, also nice defensive piece against other melee decks. And then this guy. This is one that I keep thinking of taking out, but I really like the primary attacks out of Psychic, so he does Psychic damage to clear shields and do extra damage to injured cards. Giant Wound Pool is vulnerable to big game hunters, so you didn't have to watch it, but also has that good melee and anti-infantry. Now, I'm really sad that this guy lost Fear, um, but 
Since I've been running him, he does just fine. My games are quick, so he doesn't really die, especially that Medicaid in there. Um, and he hits really hard in melee, which is great, and then does enough damage in Psychic to matter. So he's been terrific. So as much as I've thought about taking him out, he's a, a great piece in there. And then Whisperhead is stupidly durable. So durable that I have him in here at level 4, which is crazy. Um, points work out really well, but that regen on top of Aramon's trait makes him absolutely way stickier than the 13 points should be. Um, and once I get him up here, once he gets that rank 3 regen, he'll have better hit points, so I'll have that rank 3 regen. And he'll also have a better psychic attack as well. So right now he's just kind of in here as a filler, but is a whole lot more durable than a 13 point card as any reason being. So that's why he's in there. Kind of in there as a hopeful piece. I rarely ever even play him. So we'll go ahead and see how this goes. Now that I've talked this up, watch me just get completely wrecked. Yeah, this is cool. And one of the things about all these decks that I wanted to highlight is they do reflect changes in the most recent season. But then looking at the individual pieces, they reflect both what I've learned kind of playing through the game. Oh, no. Okay, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> both what I've learned playing through the game. Um, and then also not just the most recent changes, but a lot of changes leading up to this. So Aramon's change is a really big one. Uh, but of course, another one is the anti-infantry change. So this guy gaining anti-infantry, Whisperhead is a new card. So on the whole, it's a really... Oh, nice. See, there's that 30-point damage. On the whole, this is a totally different game from when I last was running Aramon consistently and from when I last kind of had this... Uh... Ooh, and see, here's that anti-infantry is going to trigger. Boom, boom, boom. To do a lot more damage than I would have, would have done... Um with Psychic, or at least kill an additional card than I would have. And here's a case where I don't necessarily want to go Psychic, but I'm going to. Oh, I don't actually like that. I'll do this. And here again, Anti-Infantry is going to trigger. Uh, it's not actually going to trigger. I maybe should have switched that, because Anti-Infantry over here probably would have killed that guy outright. Oh, it's getting down to the wire. Oh, man. Okay, we got to do Psychic. Much as I don't want to do it, it'll be okay. Um, Anti-infantry. Woof! Bummer. That's a problem. <laughs> All right, so here's what's going to happen. This guy's going to kill that on the drop, and I may be able to kill this. Not quite, but real close. Come on, Aramon. Ah, ah, it was the five. So there are still moments where it doesn't trigger everything, but woof! Oh, gross. <laughs> Alright, we're going to do another one. But you kind of saw how the deck worked. Um, Call just... He punched right through that fear card, of course, because that's what Call does. Um, and then also just that Barrage did so much damage, because Barrage does a lot more damage with Call than it normally would. So my stuff was chipped apart. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But that was just a bad matchup. I'm still very happy with the deck. I'm still happy with the Warlord. So we're going to give it another run just to go ahead and give him a fair shake before we get to the last two. Any second now. Any second now. We're just clicking on stuff until something happens. There we go. So we're going to try this again. I know, of course, you can do a lot of different things with Aramon, but I really do think that there's a lot of value in having the fairly thin deck with multiple attack types that leans on a couple heavy, powerful cards. That has been incredibly strong with... Mm, I want... Ew. That's been incredibly strong against uh, with non-Aramon decks, and then does really do well against Aramon. So here... Oh, man. Yeah, we're going to punch him. So this is why you have the alternate attack type. This is my attack back in... Psychic will prevent him from actually hitting me with Psychic. And then my melee is dramatically better than his. And of course I've got the level advantage here, but this still would have been a really hard matchup if I'd gone pure Psyker. And you can see those Aramon damage. I know this is super, super fast, but you can see that Aramon bolt going through and doing not insignificant damage across the board. And here I didn't lose a single card, so could not be more different <laughs> matches. He's going to shoot me, of course, and then he'll just die at the start of my turn. Bloop. All right, there we go. So that's Aramon. I'm going to look at the Servants of the Emperor next. And this is a fun one. Ooh. 
because this is the custodian season. So I'm going to look first at a kind of more fun deck, and then I'll look at a more serious deck. And I'm only going to play with the more serious decks, just so you can kind of see that. Man. There we go. Getting some weird crashes here. I'm doing a lot in the background, so it's probably my fault, but... Uh, that is annoying. I'm going to take a quick pause. Well, no, we're not going to do that. There we go. It'll go. We'll just give it a minute. So, we're talking about Servants of the Emperor. Of course, they just got a giant buff to all of their custodian pieces, uh, both in combination of cost, but mostly in stats. So, looking at this deck, this is way more punchy and way more distributed stats and hit points and damage than um, Canadus has been able to pull off before. Now, I am missing the key piece of the Living Saint, Celestine herself, but this is just so good. <laughs> it's fine. So, this is the one I've been laddering to see how good it is, and I'll play again with that one, but first, I want to go ahead and show my other deck, which, of course, I skipped past the Warlords. If you want to stick with all gold, you can also run Vol. Morven Vol, who I think is incredibly powerful. Uh, she's probably not as good with Custodians as the Canoness is, um, but her defensive abilities really, really help kind of keep all of these things on the board for a long time, and they are really effective. The last game I played was a horrible match against a Nemesis Zandrek deck, and I got wrecked. So I'll come back to that. Um, this is pretty great. So these are the standard five custodians that I'm using. There is a cheaper 21.1 I just got some copies of, but it's nowhere near the level I need to have it replace any of these. Uh, of course, I've got the four-point Medicaid in there to round out the points. She's got plenty of gold on her. There you go. But canon as it is. And then after this, we've got one more Warlord, so we'll keep it relatively short, and we'll go from there. Any second now. There we go. I think it was already going, and that's really my fault. I'm uh, processing some videos in the back end right now, but didn't want to wait to record this. But yeah, so basically all of the Custodians got a bump to damage, some got a bump to hit points, um, and it's both ranged and melee damage. They hit very hard. And this guy got a dramatic buff to everything, but then also did get more expensive. Ooh. got a bunch of shields in here, and this really distributes the durability, so I've got a lot of damage on the board, and then also these cards, oh, I forgot this guy lost melee. Ooh, different. So with Canon S, a lot of the time you have cards in there that you want to get killed, and that is the case here too, but not as much. This really leans on very durable cards that hit hard the whole time they're alive. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more than it does just straight on getting your bonus attacks. Look at this. Great big buff to damage. He hits so hard now. Womp womp. And pew pew laser beams. So you can just see it's just a very effective deck kind of all the way through. That was a fairly easy matchup because I was over leveled. So we'll play one more of those and then we'll get to our final warlord today. But yeah, so nothing has fundamentally changed about the Canon S. I was actually not certain about leveling with Servants of the Emperor. I was going to go with Voldus instead. Um, but ended up making the choice to go with Canon S because of the sheer volume of cards that have been buffed and because it's in theme with the actual season. So it made sense to go ahead and do it. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. I've always liked the Custodian cards, but I would always use maybe one, maybe two. Um, so it's really nice to be able to use this many of them be able to without feeling like I was taking a giant handicap. All right, we got Huron. This is kind of a tricky part of the season. I've laddered very aggressively up to here, so there aren't a ton of players at this trophy rating. Um, so it's a bit muddied all the people I'm playing against. So I'm playing against a lot of decks that are kind of underleveled relative to me. Oof, man. Heck of an opening. Boom. Ooh. Nice little Nurgle flavor in this one. Splat. Sucks for you, Typhus. I should not be trash talking. I 
I will get my comeuppance in no time. But very fast. I've talked in the past about momentum decks, where especially when you're laddering early in the season, it's really good to have decks that play fast. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I'm leaning away from Vol right now as well, because she's a very defensive warlord, and so doesn't amplify aggression at all, where Cannon S can give you a lot of bonus damage, not when it's not even your turn. And we have Mars. And look, Custodians. Ah. Uh, okay, so last one. And that's just a fairly standard Cannon S, but usually Cannon S has more taunt. Um, oh, okay, there it switched over. Has more taunt, has a couple cards that hit harder, but then a lot more fragile cards. So you just don't have the same level of hard-hitting cards spread out throughout the entire deck, which I really appreciate about the current version and really appreciate about Canon S herself, or about the Custodian season. I expect her to perform very well. We'll see how I get in the ladder this season. Next, but not least, we have the Orcs. And I want to kind of touch on more orcs. I'm going to definitely tinker around throughout the season, but of course I really, I just got my hands on Gaz. I've been really, really enjoying him, um, and I wanted to go ahead and play him. So a couple things here. So I did the Warlord Guide. One of the key pieces is that you want really high hit point cards. So I was running a deck that was built around this guy right here, uh, just because that giant wound pool, but his stats are still not very good, even with death blow. Um, and what I found was he took a bunch of damage fairly quickly. And then all of a sudden those drops I built around that great big health pool were a lot less effective. So instead, I've of course got the cheap guy with a bunch of hit points to add the additional triggers. Likewise for Makari, these are very cheap cards that you can drop uh, and do a bunch of free damage. And then of course the endless that will do multiple drops as well if you put him in a dangerous spot when you have a bunch of hit points on the table. But then I've got the other Makari, who same thing, has a giant wound pool for the cost, and has taunt to keep your hit points and your other cards up there. And then I've got these two. This one because he's got shield, so he's a great combination of attack stats, cost, and shields. So he's got a decent health pool that also will stay there for a while while people clear his shields, which helps your triggers have a little bit more oomph to them. And he's really good at that ranged attack back. Now that did sacrifice a fair bit of my, of my melee, so I've got this guy in here who has the uh, Inspiring Presence to bump my attack values, has that uh, Furious Charge to top on top of the free attacks from Gaz, and has a really good melee attack and stat himself, plus having a great wound pool for the cost. So what I've done here is kind of make my... protect my wound pool a little bit, spread it out a little bit more so it's not just all in one or two cards. Um, yeah, and it's worked out very effectively so far, so let's give it a try. And it has so far performed better than my... Uh, St mm, Stompa, not Stompa, what is it? Squigoth. It has performed better so far than my Squigoth deck has, so it's... I've been validated thus far in the change, but I'm very actively tinkering with Gaz, so we'll see how this turns out and if my final deck ends up the same. Alright, and so because he's newer, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Gaz, and because he's our last one. So you want to play your highest wound pool cards first, so that you have them on the board when you do the drop. Oh yeah, and it goes through shields. Yeah, and we're gonna go QP laser beams. Punched right through the shields for that, but wow. For the 40 hit points he had left. But yeah, so right there you're seeing my taunt card is not losing as many hit points as he could because he has taunt, so he's got the damage reduction. And then also my other cards are able to compensate by doing a little additional damage on the fringes that they otherwise wouldn't because they would be getting their health shaved off by attacks. And then I'm able to do a lot of ranged attacks. And then of course he's gonna get some kills here, which will do additional triggers. Splat. So it's just constant, constant damage between that Furious Charge, the free damage drops. I don't have any Barrage in here, which is a bummer. I also don't have any Death Blow, which are both things I would love to have. Um, but it's been really effective, like I was saying. And it's still fairly early in the season. Until I get to Terra and kind of the upper tiers, we won't really, or I won't really know how that's actually performing. But so far, been a very effective Warlord. We'll do one more with Gaz. And then we'll call it. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen some other deck modes in here. I really like being able to insulate your hit points to the point where your drops are more meaningful. And then also spreading your cards out a bit so you are still getting multiple drops as well. 
Any second now. There, okay. Sorry about that. Almost done. You've been great. Mm. Zima, okay. Again, highest hit point ones first. It is a bummer to have a higher initiative deck, so I'm always deploying first. And yeah, I'm still dramatically over-leveled here. Oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. Yeah, just level two, which is great. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Ooh, Zima, that's gonna hurt. It did. And I will say that this does mean I'm triggering my... Uh, Nuts. My bonus damage attacks a lot less often than I was before. So he didn't even get to attack, which is great. And Zima herself. Ouch. But that, the damage buff is no joke. It really does do a lot more damage than you would expect. Anti-infantry. Ah. If that uh, bonus attack had landed on Zima, I probably could have gotten lethal here, but maybe not. And to Zima, not infantry? No, got the bike. Yeah, okay. All right. I was expecting anti-infantry to trigger there. But there you go. Comfortable win. Yeah, so that's it. Hopefully that was fun. Uh, those are the decks and, of course, factions that I'm going to be laddering through this season. Um, always love to see a little bit of a glow up for older warlords and some of the kind of less loved warlords. And, of course, I'm really enjoying Gaz. So that is it. Until next time.